Is it time to play the game again? And what exactly game are we talking about? Is this Triple H returning to the ring? Is this Triple H returning to his executive roles as the head of WWE NXT? We don't know. He's never been completely out of the game, but after suffering a very serious cardiac event last year and announcing publicly his retirement from in-ring action this past March, what does it mean with a recent report that says that Triple H is back at WWE's Performance Center, telling people he's back? What does this mean plus cody rhodes is on the shelf for wwe with a major pectoral injury we have a kind of line of return for him in redemption when could that lay out when could we see him return and the big family that we all know is running the business the bloodline of wwe the usos apparently were supposed to have some type of on-screen presentation with solo sakai uh, and he's a member of the family. What was that supposed to be? Why is that not happening? Charlotte Flair, she has been out of action for some time. We'll find out about when she could be returning to WWE SmackDown. And AEW's Buddy Murphy is on the shelf with an injury. We have a lot to get into today. Share that link or so you stink. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. What? What's up, everybody? It's Kev Kellum. Watch this out. is Sports Kid Wrestling's top story of the day, five days a week. If you haven't seen yesterday's episode with Bill After, go check it out. It's up on our Facebook. It's up on our YouTubes. It's and uh, it's in the podcast as well. You can get the podcast. Thank you guys for making us number one in Israel, number one in in uh, number one, not in India, we're in the top ten, a number one in Ireland again on the uh, Apple Wrestling Podcast charts. Thank you so much, Jose G and Jeremy Bennett, joining me as always to jump into the stories of the day and your comments popping up on screen if you're with us live. If you're with us on demand, don't be afraid of jumping in the conversation too. I got to talk to some. People By the way, big shout out to, show. to the to the entire Watch Out Army for putting us almost at 31,000. All of our numbers were amazing this week. Everything was in the green. We couldn't have done it without you guys' support. So we appreciate you. We appreciate mm -hmm. you guys. We love you. So show the support by sliding that like button right now. There's 152 of you watching right now live. Let's get into our lead story here, guys. Uh, so post wrestling's very reliable John Pollock shut up there north to the great white north. Yeah, uh, I love him. Love the work he does with waiting. Love him all the way back to his live audio wrestling days. He's got a big old scoop Rooney here. And that is that Triple H apparently made a return today or this week to the WWE Performance Center and was telling people I'm back. In what capacity is he back? That is not clear, but obviously people rushed to a possible hopeful in-ring return for him. Uh, his in-ring matches prior to this cardiac event for him last year were sporadic at best, uh, and you would get some big matches from him once or twice a year, at least in the past few, sometimes at a WrestleMania, sometimes at a big Saudi Arabia event. Uh, and uh, those are special things. And he even kind of noted th those become less and less of a thing as he became more and more of an executive. And he's been an executive basically for fans for the better part of the last, what, eight, nine years now, you know? And so I'm of the thought, I don't need to see him wrestle again. I think, I think he's done everything he needs to do. But with the shakeup in WWE and this massive investigation and Vince McMahon stepping out of an executive role, Triple H's wife, Stephanie McMahon, stepping into the interim chairwoman role, Man, we also had, you know, the head of talent relations being moved around in an interim basis with John Laurinaitis being out and Bruce Pritchard taking that position. So behind the scenes with WWE, there's some shuffling about. There's some serious shuffling going on here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and really a lot of confusion coming out of that report because, uh, you know, a lot of people were wondering what that meant because the uh, according to the sources that were down in Orlando, they weren't sure what he meant by that. Obviously, I don't think it means a return to the ring, but you never know. I would triple H, you should never know. But, uh, you know, it's kind of weird how uh, it left a lot of people confused. Uh, Brian Alvarez from mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Wrestling Observer said uh, that they could confirm uh, John Pollock's report. Triple H showed up at NXT today and had a meeting with everyone. The two things are that uh, he said that were notable is that he is back. He also said he was there for business reasons, but could not say why yet. So there could be even more shakeups coming uh, uh, down the line here. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what all is going to shake out from uh, from uh, Triple H returning to uh, down to Orlando. Man, I really, don't know, I really don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to believe if, if he is coming back or not. 
One thing's for sure is that if he does come back, he will not be the same Triple H that we all know to love. It'll probably be a, a, a really reduced match, maybe even a tag match. I mean, I don't know. Um, I, for one, don't expect him to make a return to the ring anytime soon, not in the year, not in the next uh, year or two. But what's interesting, though, that now that he's back in Orlando, he says, I'm back. Maybe that's alluding something to NXT. Maybe he is taking NXT back. I mean, that would be amazing if that would if that is the case. But again, we simply just do not know, and we can only just make a speculation based on the quote, "I'm back." So that's my take. Uh, I'm of the thought that he's taking over some role with the, the Performance Center again. That he's gonna if he isn't taking it over completely, he's gonna have a lot more influence on it now. Uh, and it's worth noting, you know this guy had a very serious health problem and I understood like uh, it's a heart issue. So you're, you're not going to mess with stress here. Uh, the fact that he would say that he's back and enough people would hear it. You're not trying. It's not like you're not trying to put a message out there, you know? Uh, and everything with WWE recently it has been a little bit more closer to the chest with everything that's been happening uh, with, with Vince in this investigation. So I understand if WWE is not making a declaration about this publicly and saying this, but Triple H wants people in the company to know. And by default, you know, people in wrestling media circles to know about this. That's the way it looks. That's the way it, that's the impression that's being made here. Uh, and if he is taking over uh, NXT, he's doing it on a little, I guess he picked a good week to do it, you know, because the ratings came out for this, for last night's overnight rating show scoring its highest rating since uh, October, not a massive number, but a strong one, 637 viewers up 37% week to week. They were not, they did not have major competition from the Stanley cup playoffs, which has been hurting them the past couple of weeks. Uh, they did go up against the college world series of baseball on cable and that dominated it so not a hot night for television but a good night for nxt overall so strong number strong demo number uh you know over six hundred thousand for the night they're in the position they're in that's not a bad number to be in this raises an interesting question here by kenny williams watching us on youtube yo is that why the last two episodes were taped to reset nxt for a few weeks with him back at the no. helm no the, um, the, la the last two weeks were taped because they went on the road yeah, because they went on the road. Thank you, Jeremy. And yeah. I, but I no, I don't think he's no. I, I don't think that's the case. I, I I think people trying to connect dots just simply don't connect there. No. I the, think the main reason was because they went on the road for the first time in two years. So how much do you guys think this is a fallout from the investigation last week? Ooh. I don't know because he's there for business reasons. Again, um, Vince and Bruce kind of took over NXT. Now that Bruce ha is putting on that talent relations hat. This uh, could very well be that scenario. And Vince is stepping away. Now Triple H might be the guy again in NXT because uh, Bruce and Vince were looking at it very closely. That's when the the 2.0 happened. Uh, now, I'm not going to say it's going to be a return to black and gold, but I think Triple H is probably now going to run the show from now on, call the shots because Bruce has got an extra. And that's okay. Yeah, he's got an extra set of responsibilities filling in for Laurinaitis, and Vince obviously has stepped away uh, and uh, with uh, on the business side of things, and he's probably now wanting wanting to probably focus his creative on SmackDown and Raw, so he's stepping away maybe from NXT as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to sign up to go to next week's NXT uh, here live to just in case because uh, what <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Is we, what if that is indeed the case? Because Bruce Pritchard now is head of talent relations. He has a whole new role that he needs to take care of. He can't pay attention to NXT talent relations and no. all the other stuff that he's doing, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if Triple H leaves. Shot, I wouldn't Sean be and Trips, baby. Shot and Trips at NXT. I, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Triple H leads off the show Tuesday next week. It'd be all wild. Right. I'm signing up. I'm gonna be at NXT next Tuesday. Might not be a bad yeah. idea, Jose. Yeah, yeah, it might yeah, not be a bad nice idea. Stuff. Why don't you go all the time? Why don't you go all the time? I got plenty right of other there. stuff to do. It's all, it, and it's here all the time. So okay, so you're spoiled. Is what you're saying? Yeah. It ain't going yeah. away. It ain't going away. It ain't going away. Right. I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying completely. Uh, so let let's talk about this. I want to hear from fans. I want to hear what you guys are thinking. I want to hear what your your hot takes are on this entire story. Let us know. Get on screen with this. Uh, we'll come back with your comments on screen. We cover this next story here. This one's kind of interesting as well. 
Uh, I, I was wondering how this was going to play out here. There's a pretty serious injury for Cody Rhodes. I saw the match live. It was a valiant effort. They used all the gaga, all the tricks, and a whole lot of grit to get through it. Cody Rhodes uh, headlining his first pay-per-view for WWE ever, not just since his returns, <laughs> ever. And he has to deal with this awful torn pectoral muscle inside of Hell in a Cell with Seth Rollins. And, and I think they exceeded expectations under the circumstances. But what are the expectations for him returning to the ring? And Because they were through the roof for him to become the top baby face of the company in such a short amount of time. He really, really achieved that goal. I mean, in terms of just fans getting behind him, I think he'll have a monster response when he gets back. What's the time frame for him returning from this, from this pec injury? And what's the status of it? Uh, Cody via Instagram uh, was uh, basically, I guess, told by physicians and whatnot that the plan is a nine month recovery and uh well cody just basically says i've got a plan of my own obviously um with some of the more recent uh, similar injuries in professional wrestling obviously john cena's miraculous four-month recovery coming uh leading into his uh, surprise entrance at the 2008 royal rumble mm -hmm. uh is probably a more of an exception to the rule where a lot of other standard injuries on this front have been looking at about the five or six month time frame. Uh, with those, they may not have been completely torn off the bone like Cody's. So maybe Cody's is a different situation, but we all know Cody is going to work his ass off to rehab and beat that nine month time frame by a long shot. Again, I, I would not be surprised if it's Royal Rumble that he comes back at. Who knows? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of wide open stuff here. I think if you can get Cody um, available for that WrestleMania season, that's ideal. That's ideal is to get him back in the mix, get fans excited, have a fresh character that fans can get behind. Get a, give me a hero because you got plenty of villains. They got a lot of good villains right now in WWE. They need some hot heroes that fans can get behind and. and root for and go go over with uh here so I, i'm of the thought i think he gets a monster response no matter when he comes back uh, oh, it'll absolutely. Be a huge one it'll be a huge i think I, I think there's no doubt that he's gonna get a very warm if you thought that his pop for wrestlemania was loud his return from his injury is gonna be even louder uh but still uh talking about our our, our lead story here from triple h Stephen chambers is saying be interesting to see if gargano and Larray come back if triple h is back in nxt That'll be well, think about it. You got you got a lot of those AEW people that are gonna have their contracts coming up here in the next eight to nine months. A lot of those people that sign those initial deals that are core members of AEW are gonna have deals that come up. You have television contracts for Raw and SmackDown that come up in the sometime in the time frame of 2024. AEW's television deal is up. Now you have him back in a position where he may have a little bit more stroke, a little bit more influence, a little bit more direct influence on a television show. All right. What, what what do you got, WWE? I'm over here at AEW. We've heard that when Cody jumped over, that a lot of people saw the way that Cody was treated, that, all right, it's a little bit more compelling. And this is part of the default of what AEW has created. This is a bigger market for televised wrestling talent now. And uh, Triple H is a guy who is already able to bring in a lot of name-worthy talent to WWE in the past 10 to 15 years, whether it was at NXT or even at the main roster level, and made them feel special and put them in big positions. And I'm talking across the board from your Samoa Joes to your Roman Reigns to the Shield, all those guys. They all have his fingerprint on them, whether it be in the ring, whether it be in their development. And if you're somebody else in wrestling, I can tell you this from talking to people in prime independent wrestling positions. WWE has never been not a destination to go to. It's never, it's ne the AEW has never eclipsed them in terms of, all right, the first place you want to go is here. And then after that, you want to go to AEW in terms of your pay, your compensation, and the platform you're on. Now it got a little bit more competitive, you know, in the last couple of years. But now you got to think, oh, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely have to you know, definitely pursue that WWE uh, possibility there. Yeah, we got a comment here from David Barclay from the Barclay Center. Hunter has invaluable coaching and experience to offer with WWE focused on the NIL deals. Mm -hmm. There's no more one fit to lead the charge. Hunter himself was a bodybuilder who transitioned to wrestling. So um, that may, that's a great point by, Dave, uh, by David because uh, now that they are going full steam ahead with the NIL program, he's heading that. And he's, it's just more convenient if he is the head or the guy in charge of NXT. So... Uh, I don't know. I think that's a, that, that was a good comment there. True, true. You know, and but we're always going to have the NXT is different from Raw and SmackDown conversation. Uh, yeah, too, yeah, yeah. So uh, and and uh, let's get into this one. Big star, I think, in NXT, who they've yet to even just 
get the miles out of him within the by the, the, by the way, know, Kevin, instant. before before you pronounce it and you get ridiculed again in the comment section, Sikoa, not Sikoa. 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 I'm sorry. I'm gonna, get <laughs> I'm gonna get chopped by every everybody I know if I get it wrong. <laughs> solo right there in the middle of the Usos. He is a part of <laughs> just the called big... him solo now. <laughs> yeah. I, I screwed it up many times too. So yeah. So I'm gonna avoid it, guys. So why are we highlighting it? I'm trying to do the Heyman thing. Low light the weaknesses. I like the strengths, and then you guys bring it up again. You know, block, thank you. Block, block bad, harness good. Block yes. bad, harness good. Solo was supposed to have something special with the Usos, but the plans changed, pal. Tell me about this. Uh, recently, so Solo Sokoa talked with BT Sport and revealed that he was nearly paired with his brothers right from the get go. Uh, he says, it's easy to go back to I'm their brother, I'm their family. At the end of the day, I don't want to be referred to their brother or their cousin. I want people to recognize me for me. Before I started and debuted on TV, Creative was like, well, we'll just put you with your brothers. Then the next meeting was, let's see what you can do on your own. That was fire where it was, uh, okay, this is my time. This is my time for fans to recognize me instead of your Jimmy and Jay's brother. Before I had black hair and we all did look alike, but I was bigger. We had different shapes. Nine months later, People know Solo. That's Solo. Uh, when he was asked how he felt when he heard he could be paired with the Usos, he replied, I was like, okay, that'll be cool because that's when they started saying we the ones and throwing the ones up. But I was like, I don't know. I still like, I still feel like I would be in their shadows. I need to step out and do me. The world needs to see me. They've already seen them and what they can do. It will work out just fine. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I know I've heard a lot of people fantasy book more and more members of the bloodline. They should have this person and Naomi's married to one of the Usos and they should have her out there. And and uh, you have Sami Zayn <laughs> trying to like wrestle his way into man, it. Man, if Rick Uccino's prophecy of him winning money in the bank comes true, man, that's going to be tremendous. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be the that's the best story they could have outside of Seth with Cody lurking in the yeah. shadows is Sami Zayn winning money in the bank. Um, but I do, I do think uh, Solo Sokoa has a lot more to do in WWE NXT. I, I, I think he has a lot more to it. do in WWE NXT. I think he's had some, he's had some f solid matches there. But just, I think here's the problem: just being a part of the family does not mean that you're ready for television. Everybody, like, I'm, I'm that is me degrading anybody. That's me playing a real game here. NXT needs some studs. They need some, you know, they need some stallions in, in their stable. And this is a guy who can do some big things there. I would, uh, why haven't seen him and Braun? I think him and Braun will be a great match for the NXT championship. And everyone's talking about him going for that North American title, the IC equivalent in NXT. I think he'd be great for him and Braun. Just, ah, just a big wrecking guy just smacking the crap mm -hmm. out of each other. I'd love to see mm -hmm. that. Almost feels like the uh, North American Championships, actually. I've been saying this many times lately. It, it's been the more important title on NXT lately. With, just bigger matches. You know, with, you, yeah, you just have bigger matches with Cameron matches Grimes. Too. With Car who's Carmel, involved? Uh, Carmelo Hayes is just like one of the, the best performers they have pound for pound. You know, people said that about him when he started and he delivered on it right away. He's one of those guys of the 2.0 class that is absolutely everything he says he is that's undeniable anybody in any wrestling promotion would want him now he's in a great position i wonder about him going up to the you know the nxt championship level so a lot to say good i mean good vibes for nxt today good rating triple h is back some good matches we haven't said this many good things about nxt in a while am i, am I wrong no man i mean i can't really think of when we've had something like this since the black and gold, I mean, right now we we do have some pretty good caliber stars, especially in that North American title picture that are just putting mm -hmm. on some absolute bangers, bro. Like it's just unbelievable the amount of talent that's coming out right there, and they're not getting that. I don't think that the internet wrestling community is giving yeah. NXT two point their fair share yeah. because they are putting some tremendous stuff out. Yeah, and now you're gonna add Wesley into that picture uh, with him getting involved with Trick last night. So yeah, uh, you know, and and, and Cameron... Trick is such a smooth talker too, man. Oh yeah, him and, him, and, him and Carmelo are, are so tremendous. I will not be surprised if they get called up in the next few months along with Braun. Um, but I'm sure Sean, I mean, that's Sean's boy though. So I know Sean would want to have them in NXT for as long as possible. Which Sean he, do you speak of? Uh, HBK, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, but now you're adding Wes Lee into that. And, and to me, I feel like the North American title is more important than the NXT title at this point. 
It'll be certainly interesting to see how this plays out here. A lot of play people have takes on this. Charlotte Ooh. Flair, uh, last time we saw her was at WrestleMania Backlash Ooh. on the losing end, the losing end of an I Quit match against Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. They had a pretty solid, I would just say solid match at WrestleMania. I thought the last one on, on this Backlash pay-per-view was much better. Uh, but she's been out of action ever since. Did get married to Andrade. Congratulations to them. And, and obviously has been keeping an active profile on social media. Still looks like a million bucks. But when is she going to come back and wrestle like a million bucks? Do we have a time frame for that? Because WWE may have put this information out maybe a little bit sooner than we were expecting. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina, is uh, is advertising Charlotte Flair for the August 12th SmackDown TV taping. Uh, does not list who she's going to be facing, but I would say that uh, I think we should expect her a lot sooner because I think she's going to be in Money in the Bank and win Money in the Bank. Uh, so I think we will probably see her Friday. I would not be surprised. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Makes Could sense. be interesting. Could yeah, be August 12th interesting. is that's nearly two months away. Uh, I, I think she is going to be back for money and, and win money in the bank. If not, she's she going to be a very last instrument and she ain't missing SummerSlam either. I don't think I, I wouldn't. There's no reason for her to miss SummerSlam either. It, she got married. It's not like she just had a kid. So she, you know, no, so. but, but also it's, it's worth saying the way they treated Roman Reigns recently and Charlotte could be considered the female Roman Reigns in terms of just star power and everything like that. Obviously she's not as dominating. She doesn't have a title. I would like I mean, to see her do. She, I'd like to see her do something away from a championship. She's been posting. Uh, she's been posting workouts with her and Andrade. She's. I think she's coming back Friday. I would not okay. be surprised. Yeah, you know, Victor saying, "Screw Charlotte, bring back Bailey." We've been waiting yeah. on Bailey for such a long time. I, I, yeah, I don't know what why not bring them both. Bring them both back. Who cares? There's only, there's only two back. spots left, and one's going to be either uh, Shotzi or Aaliyah. Which uh, uh, Rick, we were we were talking about some things to believe in last night and uh uh rick believes that becky lynch is going to attack shot the winner of shots and Aaliyah, kind of a kofi situation and, and get her way in there that leaves the door for only one other entrant which would be in my opinion charlotte flair doesn't even need to qualify because she's charlotte flair because she's Ooh. charlotte flair yeah some more unfortunate news for all elite wrestling here leading into a big big event for them this sunday on traditional pay-per-view and you can also get it with bleacher report and that is AEW's Forbidden Door. They've had so many different entries that have possibly held up this card. Most notably, AEW World Champion CM Punk. Now we have another one here with Buddy Murphy of the House of Black revealing that he is suffering an injury. How severe are we talking here, guys? Uh, Buddy Murphy here on uh, or Buddy Matthews. Yeah, there we go. Uh, on Instagram, a- admitted that he's dealing with some uh, shoulder a-, a shoulder injury. He said, "Always a work in progress. Dealing with a shoulder injury, which limits a lot of my shoulder movements, but slowly increasing the weight again. Uh, be better than you were yesterday. So, uh, not any idea about the severity of it, but he's training. So uh, apparently, it's not that serious, but maybe enough to keep him out of the ring. It's uh, it's hard to tell, but um." Uh, we got, you know, we, we got, um, pa, you know, we got, a uh, um, Malachi Black in the, uh, the all Atlantic, uh, kind of race there. I don't think there's any plans for Brody and Buddy, uh, at, at uh, at Forbidden Door, but, uh, there mm-hmm. are, from what word is on the street, there are four matches to be announced tonight. So, uh, that's from Tony Khan on Busted Open Radio tonight. So it'll be interesting to see. And uh, we also, uh, late uh, late news in here uh, on the injury front, uh, Rhea Ripley uh, clarified that she is uh, uh, dealing with uh, some stuff there too because she got uh, some teeth knocked loose uh, during Raw. So that, that was legit that, uh, that she did get uh, banged up a little bit. So they decided to be uh, cautionary with her, pull her out. Of course, Carmella won the five-way on Monday night and will replace her against Bianca Belair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in hindsight, the best thing. With injuries right now, man. Yeah. In hindsight, yeah. probably the best thing because they really rushed Rhea up to that top of the chain. I thought they could have maybe slowed that down a little bit. And uh, now this injury allows to do that. And I think that maybe – uh, either SummerSlam, unless they're going with Becky, or Clash at the Castle, are going to be uh, uh, the, the times where you'll see Rhea become champion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just a crazy time for injuries. I really think uh, this All Elite card has been hurt by it. You know, Naito's out of action for the New Japan side. Punk's. I, mean, out. I didn't even know he had eye surgery. Yeah, and then we have we don't know what Brian Danielson's status is. He's expected to make some type of announcement on this week's Dynamite. Obviously, we're streaming to you 
before that announcement is made. If you're watching this afterwards, you may already know what that is. Keep an eye on it. We'll have full results of everything going on at sportskeeda.com. You're like, I, I don't watch this show. I do follow that show. Sportskeeda.com. We have it all in one app. You can personalize your feed in there, too. So you're like, I don't want to see WWE stuff. I just want to see AEW stuff, or I just want to see stuff about a specific person. Aggregated Nation, all right there, all in one app. Go get it. It's available on Apple. It's available on Google Play. And, of course, you can also personalize it on your desktop. So when you pull it up, the website, it's all there. You don't have to go Googling for everything. We just have the feed custom built for you. Like, no different than you would a Facebook. So there we are. That's why we're number one, baby. Number one I personalized think, uh, sports app. I think the fact that he's going to be on Dynamite tonight tells you that he's going to be wrestling on Sunday. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, obviously, I'm hopeful for it. Why would he show, show up on Dynamite it's, it's, and say I'm not wrestling? That would be pointless. I, I know. I know. But the thing is, we had CM Punk do it on TV. You know what I mean? And the, this, it's yeah, worries, but Punk it's more is worrisome, gonna, Jeremy. Punk, it's more worrisome for me. Yeah, because but it's, Punk. It's Brian but, but Punk was going to be away for several weeks, several months. Danielson was only supposed to be away for one to two weeks. So I, I unless it be, it's worse than we think. Yeah. You know, and I and I don't want it to be. I'm not happy saying that. I'm going to be at the show on Sunday. I want to see Brian Danielson in the ring wrestling. I'm not saying it's because I enjoy giving people bad news. I take no joy in this whatsoever. Uh, but let's just hope it goes somewhere. I mean, certainly they're playing it for a rating. They want a rating. They need a rating. Yeah. Uh, you know, after the bad news of Rampage, they need Dynamite to be the solid A show because uh, they, you know, they saw that Rampage number come in. Uh, 330,000 on Friday was not a good number. Nope. Not a good number. So they need some stuff here. I hope they can make this card come together. I, I do feel like this. The, we agreed, Jeremy, you and I, that it was probably a little, probably need more time to to get from one pay per view to the next. We had like oh, what, yeah. just under six At weeks between pay per views. Yeah, they really should have been a little bit longer than it was that. Like a month. It was only a month, I think. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, tonight uh, on Twitch, getting over with Twitch, Jose and myself. We, uh, not only will we do a debrief of uh, Dynamite, we will. Uh, give you our predictions for Forbidden Door because we'll know the whole card. Uh, so with uh, the four matches that are scheduled to be added to the card, there's already six on the card right now. Uh, so we'll give you our uh, predictions tonight. So right after Dynamite, make sure you are subscribing to Twitch. All you got to do is search for Sports Key to Wrestling, all one word, and mm -hmm. uh, subscribe. And we'll go live about five to ten minutes after Dynamite goes off the air here tonight. Also, I will be with you live from the United Center in Chicago, covering the post-show media scrum, all that fun stuff that will be streaming on our channels on Sunday night. We will also have live post-show coverage as well uh, during the show, all those different tweets and stuff like that. Give us a follow at SK Wrestling underscore on the Twitter machine and on Instagram, every, anywhere else you get your wrestling content. We are there. Just search SK Wrestling, Sports Kid Wrestling. We are there. So much content coming out in the next couple of days. Uh, we'll have an interview coming out in the next few days with Thunder Rosa. Uh, we will have uh, coverage of the pre uh, the pre show press conference. Is all those different things that are going to come out before the weekend? So just a ton of stuff. You want something from Forbidden Door? We're cracking the door open. We got it all for you. Uh, give me a follow on Twitter machine at Kev Kellum. I will be live doing comedy at the Reveler tomorrow in Chicago and Andersonville. Come on out. Show is free at eight p.m. If you know anyone in Chicago, tell them to come out. I have a tour of shows coming up in early July. All of those announced at my website, KevinKellum.com. Boom, guys. And we give me a follow at Jose G official with the underscores in between the G. Uh, so make sure you do that on Instagram, Twitter, and on TikTok. I just dropped a teaser for my interview with Wrestling with Mindset. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. Give it a like, give it a share. Uh, the interview is going to be dropping on Friday morning. So check it out. It's on my Wrestling with Mindset YouTube channel, Instagram, and uh, TikTok page. So go ahead and check those out. Appreciate the love, guys. Mm hmm. And of course, Jeremy, tonight on Twitch uh, at 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern, right after AEW Dynamite, jump on there. Jose and uh, Jeremy will be on there, so definitely check that out. That'll be That's fun. Right. I'm looking forward to it. How's the territory going? You guys are running WWE 2K GM. How's the territory? We did. Uh, we had a better week. We had a better week, uh, but still, still Raw beat us. Yeah, we're uh, we're getting there. We're we're infusing some legends into the product. Uh, we are heading towards TLC. Uh, we I mean, we only really got one week in last last week because there was so much to talk about Dynamite, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot to talk about tonight too, uh, especially with four new matches added. There's going to be New Japan guys there, uh, so we'll probably get through a week or two of. Uh, of gm mode and then probably next by next week we'll get to wwe tlc uh see who's fighting for the title uh is Ran randy still double champ jose i forget he is he is randy uh randy orton is. is our smackdown champion 
alongside alongside Gunther uh, or Walter as he's in the video game. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Randy Orton and Walter are tag champs as well. So Randy's got two straps. Uh, we also got our women's champion. I think Bailey just uh, took that from Becky Lynch last week. So she is our new women's champion. So Toronto 88 says do a random hell in a cell four man online. That's what he says. You should book the territory. Oh, well, uh, shout out. Shout out to people off. in the chat. We we'll probably yeah. run a CPU match like that tonight because uh, we always yeah, we'll run a match in the background. And by the way, for those uh, wa- that do watch live on Twitch, uh, the, the gameplay has been a little choppy. I'm getting a new computer here that I should be here in a couple weeks. So hopefully that'll fix the issues um, i've got an old desktop so the, running the elgato that runs the gaming stream plus do this stream all together i think it's been kind of bogging it down but uh, overall it still works pretty good for the gm mode though shout out to people watching the show jeff samuel betty donna victor kenny ricky the, the david hall who's with us if you're with us for the first time let us know who you are we love we love seeing people pop in the show and watch all the time uh the mr james espanto Fernando. Okay. All right. We give him nicknames. We got David from the Barclays Center. All right. Kenny Omega Williams is here. Steven you know, Elimination what? Chambers. The- yeah. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat Castillo is here. Like, I do. We just you start throwing nicknames on you. So if you keep jumping the in, the Watchout Army is strong. All right. Thank you guys for the support. Uh, we have some pretty cool stuff dropping on the channel this week. And uh, make sure you turn those notifications on so you know exactly when we go live. Remember, when watching wrestling, do the most important thing, which is what, gentlemen? You got to take a deep breath. (sighs) Let it go. And just remember to enjoy it. Enjoy wrestling. Yeah. Let me talk to you. Max. Do. Watch out. Watch out.